I'm here with Lonnie Davis from Mokmogi National Monument, and basically, I just, I really don't know who the Creeks were. Uh, the, the one group that we know today is the Creeks. Uh, we automatically group them as one tribe, but in actuality, at their peak, this was actually a confederacy, and they were 66 tribes. And the 66 tribes occupied what we now know as the Panhandle of Florida, all of Georgia, and two-thirds of Alabama. And these, they lived among, uh, they lived among each other, and they had a mutual alliance for uh, protection and strength. But now the people who was north of them, uh, we know them today as the Cherokee. But okay. the Cherokee original name is Aniyunwiya, uh, and translated in the Iroquois languages, that actually means the principal people. The Aniyunwiyas, um, they got the name Cherokee from when the British first arrived here. The British was asking the Wallace, who was the other people on the other side of the rivers. The Wallace response was Cherokee, that in Mus is Muscogee word meaning don't know, different tongue. So the, basically the names that we know today as the Cherokee is actually not the original name and the Creeks was not their original names because the Creeks was basically like I said, it was 66 tribes that made up a confederacy. And this confederacy was composed of 66 different tribes, all of the Muscogee linguistic group. And they called themselves Muscogee because it was a common language. But between the Yamacross, the Yamasees, the Okotes, the Oconees, the Ufalas, the Tuskegees, uh, the Kaleges, the, all of these different tribes, they, they called themselves Muscogee because it was a common language. And it's ironic, the language that the United States government almost wiped out in 1870 was turned around several decades later and used on the battlefield in World War I. The reason being, when the Germans had occupied those trenches, the Germans had actually tapped into the wire. So when the French soldiers occupied the trenches, they was too lazy or too crazy not to replace the land wire. So the Germans' telephone operators just listening in, so they knew exactly where, what sector was going to, troops was going to come out of, so they could mass machine gun and artillery fire, and they basically decimated the French. When the United States joined into World War I, they put American troops in the same trenches and the exact same thing happened. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't until the Muscogees and the Choctaw showed up speaking in their own language, they felt comfortable relaying battlefield and, you know, information in their own language. So they just sent us speaking in the Muscogees. The Germans' telephone operators on the other side was totally confused. They had no idea who it was. The code talkers you're talking about? Well, this is actually predates the World War II code talkers. Oh, the, it predates the Navajos. Right. This okay. is World War I. Oh, wow. General Pershing. Okay. Right. Wow. Uh, and so it was actually during World War I that the the Muscogee language was used in the trenches in World War I and saved a lot of American lives. So. United States Signal School and the United States uh, you know, military, they decided to use American Indian languages as a code for World War II. But during World War I, there was a corporal in the Vermont who realized this too. But then the, when World War II broke out, this corporal was now known as, as he was a chancellor. He was Adolf, Adolf Hitler. Hitler. Wow. So Adolf Hitler had actually sent language here to learn the Cherokee and the Muscogee language because those languages had been used on the battlefields of World War I. Yeah. But what he did know, there were 16 distinct uh, linguistic groups here of American Indian, and the United States Army Signal School chose the Sioux language, whereas the Naval uh, Signal School chose the language from the Diné or Navajo. Mm -hmm.